Cool. Okay. So there's a couple of other people who are supposed to be um, joining us, but I think they might be watching the workout later. So can everyone see me first of all? Yes, can everyone hear me okay? Cool, cool, cool. If you can't at any point um, or you have any questions, do message me on the Warriors Live WhatsApp group and I'll be sure to make sure that um, I either answer it if and when I can during that um, during the session or at the end. Otherwise, we are gonna get started. Uh, good idea to say at the beginning, if anything feels like it's painful in a way that's more than just muscle ache, then don't do it and message me and we can have a chat about it afterwards. Uh, make sure you're drinking lots of water throughout. I've just bought myself two glasses of water and both cats have gone and drank out of each of them. <laughs> Disgusting. Uh, never mind. Um, cool. So I think that's it. We were, oh, there's a couple more people coming on board. Right, so. Oops. Okay, so get yourself positioned on the mat. We're gonna start with a couple of breathing exercises first, just to get ourselves nice and relaxed and ready to work out. So, we're going to sit up nice and tall. If you're sitting cross-legged, I'd like you to sit as, as comfortably as you can sit down. And if you need to come up onto your knees, that's absolutely fine. But if you're sitting cross-legged, then I just want you to make sure that when you're sitting down, you're not crossing over at the ankles. Because as soon as you cross over at the ankles, that means that one knee tilts up and that actually affects our pelvis and that also affects the alignment of our spine. So if you can, have it so that you can see both of your ankles in front of you. We're going to sit up nice and tall. Imagine you're being pulled up to the crown of your head by an invisible thread. It might mean as well you're tucking the chin in slightly. So embrace the double chin. Hands can be in your lap, they can be on the side, doesn't, doesn't matter. You can close your eyes as well. But sit up, but sit up, nice, sit up, nice, up, nice and in and out. Take deep breaths in, take deep breaths out. At the moment, it doesn't matter how you're breathing. I just want you to be conscious of what's going on with your body. So deep breaths in, trying to get as much air into your lungs as you can. And as you're breathing out, trying to get out as much air from your lungs as you can. Be conscious of how you're breathing. Think about where you're carrying any tension. You've got any tension through the face muscles, down the shoulders, down your hands. Also think about your knees. Are you letting your knees and your legs relax? Feel yourself relax, especially more so on every exhale. Don't forget to sit up nice and tall. And we're now just going to start breathing in and out through the nose. Deep breaths in through the nose and deep breaths out through the nose. Have your eyes closed if you like, it helps you focus more on what your body's doing. Have a think as well when you're breathing in and out through your nose about what part of your body is moving. Is there any movement through the belly? Is there any movement through the ribs? Is there any movement through the top part of your chest? And also, is there any movement up by your shoulders? So what we're looking to do in a minute is to try and get as efficient breathing as possible. So the next time you take a deep breath in, imagine breathing into your belly. So as you take that deep breath in, expand the belly out in front and to the sides as much as you can before you start to lift through the lower part of your ribs and expanding that wide out to the front, to the sides, and to the back. Then as you're breathing out, first of all, start by breathing out through the lower part of the abdomen. Imagine you're squeezing and rolling up the tube of toothpaste, and try and gently draw in the lower abdominals to get all the air out of the bottom part of your lungs first, before you then start to relax 
and close the diaphragm and those ribs down. So as you breathe in, breathe in through the belly, let the belly expand out to the front and to the sides before you then take the breath into the lower part of your rib cage. And as you're breathing out, first of all, then start by gently gathering in through the lower abdominals, squeezing them nice and tight before you then start drawing in through the ribs. Think as well about keeping the shoulders relaxed. We shouldn't have any movement through the shoulders. I'm going to start a little timer now just to help you get a rhythm to your breathing. So now when you're breathing in and out, I want you to breathe in for a count of four. You're going to hold that air lightly in your lungs for a count of four. You're going to breathe out for a count of four. And hold no air in your lungs for a count of four. So deep breaths in and out. Take a deep breath in for a count of four. Hold the air in your lungs for a count of four. Breathe out for a count of four. And hold no air in your lungs for a count of four. And you're gonna keep doing this for the cycle. If you find this too easy, take it up. So you're breathing in for five, you're holding for five, you're breathing out for five, and you're holding nowhere in your lungs for five. If you find it too hard, do it down to three. This breathing is known as box breathing, and it is one of the best breathing techniques just to calm your body. I don't know about you, but I've been feeling especially anxious recently. And this kind of breathing just helps ground you. It helps take you back to what's most important. And for your body, that is the breath. So do a couple of rounds here, breathing in for four, holding the air lightly for four. You're gonna breathe out for four and hold nowhere in your lungs for a count of four. Deep breaths in and out. As soon as we start breathing into our belly, we're automatically filling up to 60% of our lung capacity. As soon as we start breathing into the ribs, that gives us an extra 30%. We only get 10% capacity through the upper chest area. So as soon as you start breathing in through your belly, you're actually making the most of your breathing. And if you ever look at how babies breathe, You've got breathing experts right there. It's always their bellies that are lifting up and closing. So we've got a few more rounds now. Breathing in for four, holding the air in your lungs for four, breathing out for four, and holding no air in your lungs for four. On your next exhale, at the end of it, we're just going to gently open the eyes. We're going to have a little roll through the shoulders. You're going to take them back. You're going to take them forwards. Good. And we're going to take both arms up above the head. We're going to interlace the hands. And we're going to stretch up, 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 trying to reach those hands up towards the ceiling as far as we can take. From here, the right elbow is going to come into the right thigh and we're going to take a real nice stretch over to the side. So always think about trying to increase your stretch. Always think about trying to get more stretch up through the side using the elbow and the leg as leverage. Good. So every now and again, you should feel yourself just stretch a little bit further and you'll feel the skin around here just give a millimeter or a centimeter or so, just expanding and stretching up through here. Think as well about sitting up nice and tall. So I know that we're on our sides, but try not to crunch into the lower back. See if you can get some height, bring yourself all the way up, give yourself some space through the lower back. Your next inhale, we're gonna take it all the way up and we're gonna change over. And the left elbow is gonna come into the left thigh and we're gonna take the right arm over. We're gonna stretch, 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 try and keep both shoulders 
facing forwards and you're really going to lean into the stretch this is an active stretch this isn't just about holding your arm up this is actually about constantly trying to improve so with your fingertips imagine you're trying to touch the opposite side of the wall and every single time you give it a little bit more effort you feel yourself opening up down that side next exhale take everything up and all the way down good little shoulder rolls now little neck rolls so we're going to roll through half circles dropping the chin towards the chest and rolling first through one way and then the other it's really important to start mobilizing before we start moving good got one last little roll Take it all the way up, good. So from here, we're gonna come down onto our sides. And we're gonna do the first part of this session is gonna be on the ground. We're gonna do a bit of conditioning work. And our first exercise, the leg that's closest to the ground, you just wanna pull this up as close to your chest as you can. If you need to, you can use your other arm to help anchor it in place and your other leg is going to make a really nice long line all the way down towards the mat. So try not to have your leg coming too far forwards or coming too far back. You want to have a look, make sure it's in line with the head, the shoulders, hips and the feet. From here, we're going to pull the toe inwards and we're also then going to turn the toe upwards. So our heel is down and our toe is up. And we're going to take it up and down to a couple of fast reps. So we're working through the leg at the moment. It's really important that we focus on leg strength. And here we're working on the muscles around the hips and the legs. That gives us extra hip stability. At the same time when you're doing this, try not to roll backwards. Try not to roll forwards. Good. And we've got six, five, four, three. Make sure you're breathing throughout. Two and one. Good. If you want to take a break, take a little break. Otherwise, keep the leg out. And we're going to turn that toe down and the heel is going to come up. So this time, we've got a slight rotation of the knee inwards towards the ground. And we're going to take it up again coming up and down. So you should feel there's a slight difference in the muscles of the legs that you're using. Some of you might find this harder, some of you might find this easier, but just that tiny movement of taking the heel up towards the ceiling and dropping the toe down towards the floor means we're activating slightly, slightly different bum muscles. Good, try and keep everything else nice and still. And we've got four, Three, two, and one. If you want to take a break, take a break, do. Otherwise, keep the foot off the ground. And we're now going to take it up in line with the knee. Make sure your other hand is pressing down against the floor for stability. Try and keep your hips stacked over one another. We're just going to pull for this one. We're just going to pull the toes in towards the shin. And we're going to take it up and down. So you should be able to really, really feel this now through the leg muscles. We're focusing on what's known as the abductors. We always get them mixed up. I think that's right, the abductors. Which are the ones responsible for taking your legs off the ground. So you should get some little bit of muscle burn in the leg. Make sure you're breathing the whole way through it. And we've got another six, five, Four, three, two, and one. Good. Take it out gently. Ooh, I can definitely feel that. So from here, we're going to come down onto our back. So before we go into the other side, I'm just going to take my top off. So before we go into the other side, we're just going to work and strengthening double glutes, so both glutes at the same time. 
and we'll take it in some hip bridges. But first of all, let's get our positioning right. Make sure you can just about brush the back of the heels with your fingertips. This stops you working too much through the hamstrings as opposed to the glute. You also want to make sure that your legs aren't too far out apart, aren't too far out apart, and they aren't too close together. So roughly hip bone apart. And we're going to take the thumbs. We're going to place the thumbs on the bottom part of the ribs, the bottom, the lowest rib that you can feel, and your little finger. You're going to place on the top of your pelvis. So for some of you, it might be like putting your hands here, but I want you to keep that little finger anchored to the pelvis, and I want you to keep that thumb anchored to that bottom rib. Because now we're gonna take the bum up off the ground. And I want you to have a feel about what is going on within your hand. What we don't want is for there to be any distancing between that little finger and the thumb. So if you come all the way up and you continue going up too far, far, you'll realize that your fingers start to move apart. What we wanna do is to try and keep them the same width the whole way through. And that'll just stop you coming up too high because this isn't about how high you can take your bum off the ground. It's actually about maximizing on technique. And if you can keep the distance between your little finger on the top of the hips and your thumb on the bottom of the ribs, then that basically means that you're still keeping a good amount of core engagement there. So breathe out as you take the bum up, breathe in as you take it down. As you're breathing out, gather in the pelvic floor at the same time from back to front. So there's a lot of things at the moment that I'm asking you to do. The main one, to focus on just now is breathing out as you take the hips off the ground and breathe in as you come down. So breathing out and in. Breathing out and in. Now to add the pelvic floor contraction as you breathe out, gather the pelvic floor from back to front and breathe in and relax. Breathe out, gather the pelvic floor from back to front and breathe in. Good, we've got a couple more here. For three, and two, and one. This time you're gonna hold it all the way up here. Hold, hold, hold. And with the feet, I'm just gonna take those heels off the ground. And back down. So you can have your hands down the side to stabilize you. What we want to do is to try and keep a little bit of tension through the glutes. So make sure it's your bum that's really working here. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. It's super, super important to strengthen through the bum after pregnancy because pregnancy changes what muscles your body uses. And the poor bums, our poor bums just don't get used at all. I don't know if you've ever heard of the mum bum. You basically lose any bum muscles that you've had. Let's go a few more now. Three. Take those heels off the ground nice and high. Two. And one. Put the heels on the ground. We're going to roll all the way down. Have a two second break. But we're going to take it all the way up. And from here, heels on the ground. We're just going to pulse through those hips. So we're taking them up and down a few inches. Up a few inches. And down a few inches. Tiny, tiny little pulses, tiny, small, little movements. But what we're doing here is really working through those glute muscles. Squeezing, 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 making sure we're targeting this big muscle here. Small, small squeezes. Keep going for three, two, and one. Keep squeezing those glute muscles. We're going to hold this here. Make sure you've got everything nice and still and solid and stable. And now it's the knees. We just need to move the knees outwards. So I'll change my position so that you can see. Coming all the way up. And we're just going to take the knees outwards. So imagine you've got a line that's being drawn down here. And they're not coming to the inside of it. They're just sticking on the outside. 
a few inches out and in. Good, so your bum is always off the ground. Keep everything off. Tiny, tiny, little, little movements. Keep squeezing all the way through. We'll also be working our glutes in a different way through slightly larger movements and through the legs. This, again, is really good just for working on the different types of glute muscle and building up um, the different types of reactions. Good, three, two, and one. Bring the knees back in, come all the way down, and we're gonna go roll all the way up. This time, same thing again. You're gonna bring the knees inwards. So I'll show you what it's like. So you're coming all the way up, taking the knees inwards. Good. Good, tiny little pulses. Doesn't matter if your knees aren't touching. It's not about whether they're touching. You should also feel this now on the insides of the legs. So before on those sideline ones, we were working on the abductors. Now we'll work on the adductors. Good, so keep the bum off the ground. Make sure you're breathing. Hold this here and keep holding for five, four, three, two, and one. Good, come all the way down. You should now be really feeling it in the glutes and potentially as well through the legs. We've got one more exercise to do with this one. And again, we're gonna roll all the way up, take the bum up off the ground. And this time, we're gonna take those heels off the ground. We've got the heels off the ground, we've got a nice calf stretch going on, and we're gonna pulse through the bum. So again, try and keep everything else nice and still. We're just working through those glutes. Tiny, tiny little pulses. A couple of inches up and down, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Make sure when you're doing this, that your knees aren't splaying out to the side. You want to have everything in line from your shoulders to your hips towards your knees. Good, a couple more little squeezes. Four, three, two, keep the bum up, keep the heels up. We're gonna take those legs, those knees to the outside now. So small little pulses, pulsing them out, pulsing them out. For six, five, four, three, two, and one. Take the knees back in and little pulses in. Tiny, tiny little pulses. Good, so you should really, really be feeling this now on the insides, the legs. You know I am. <laughs> Good, little pulses for six, five, four, three, two, and one. We're gonna roll all the way down. Lengthen out through the left leg. We're gonna bring the right knee in towards your chest now and we're just gonna stretch it out. So pull this knee in towards the chest. Lie down, relax the other leg, and stretch, stretch, stretch. Good, bend that left knee, keep the foot on the ground, and you're gonna take your right ankle and place it just above the left knee. From here, you're gonna reach through to the back of the leg, and I just want you to lie back and feel that stretch through this glute that we've been using. Lie back. Feel everything stretch out, especially in your exhale. Think about releasing the muscles even more so. If you're finding this at all difficult, you might want to use a sock to help you get the grip so you can have a sock behind here. Okay, and let's swap over. So we're going to lengthen through that right leg. We're going to pull the left knee in towards the chest. And we're just going to take a couple of breaths in this stretch. From here, we're gonna bend that right knee. We're gonna have the left ankle just above the right knee. You're gonna reach through if you need to. You're gonna get a sock or a jumper or anything just behind, and you can hold it on here. If you don't have capacity to reach through. And you're going to lie back, try and relax into this. Try not to have any tension in this leg. 
because it's that left bum cheek now we're just looking to work okay take the feet back to the ground and you're going to drop the knees out to either side from here we're going to take it back up into our hip bridge so it's going to be a smaller hip bridge than before but what you want to do is to try and keep the knees nice and steady taking it up off the ground and back down it's really important as well that we try and get a little bit of rolling up through the vertebrae so as you come up tuck that pelvis under roll up through the vertebrae hold this here we don't have to take it up too high and roll all the way down try and keep the knees as steady as possible Good. Roll all the way up. Peel your vertebrae off the ground one by one. Nice. Good. We've got three more. Taking it up. The three squeeze those glutes when they're up and relax when you're down. Breathe out. Get the bum up off the ground. Pull in the pelvic floor and release as you take it down. We've got one more. Breathe out, gather on the pelvic floor, take the bum up off the ground, with this here. And I'm gonna take it all the way down, good. From here, I'm gonna come back into the starting position that we had before the hip bridges. And we're gonna work on the inner core muscles. So for those of you, and this is a really, really good exercise, this sort of couple of exercises we're gonna do, for those that have got diastasis, or what's known as um, stomach muscle separation but it's also really good just for strengthening and tightening um, and shaping that core. So we're gonna have the hands on the side, we're gonna take a deep breath in. We're gonna take the right knee up, keeping the knee at right angles. And as we breathe out, we're gonna breathe out, we're gonna gather in the pelvic floor. We might feel our lower back gently press towards the ground, which is fantastic. And we're gonna take that foot really slowly towards the ground. Then the left leg, we're gonna breathe in. We're going to take everything up so everything's at right angles and as we breathe out we're going to gather in the pelvic floor we're going to keep an eye on our tummy as well because what we don't want to happen is for things to bulge up or to come into a point at the same time you also want to feel that your lower back is flat against the ball is, is not coming up away from the ground so as you breathe out you're going to take the foot nice and slowly back down towards the ground and we're swapping legs we're alternating legs each time we go take a deep breath in the knee comes up as we breathe out we're gathering the pelvic floor we should also feel a little bit of tension occurring here but we shouldn't be we shouldn't see the stomach muscles bulging up or coming into a point and our lower back as well should be firmly pressed against the ground or we should just make sure if you can't get your back against the ground some people's spinal shapes don't allow for it just want to make sure that your lower back isn't arching off the ground. So do these in your own time. If you feel that you've done these and you've gone through these and you've actually got a very strong core, then what we're also going to do is I'll, I'll show you um, a progression for this. But one thing as well to add for this is the main thing is to try and keep your hips as steady as you can. That's a really good indicator of how strong your core is but for now for those of you that want to progress we're going to take first one knee off the ground and then the other so the further away your knees are the more core more your core is being worked so just for now just keep them over your hips or even have them slightly over your belly button and every single time you breathe out you're just going to take one foot down towards the ground as soon as you feel like your back is coming off the ground or your stomach muscles are bulging up, you're just going to take it back up. So it doesn't matter how far down you're getting that foot. The main thing is that you're focusing on your technique because what we're looking to do with these exercises are to make you stronger and not weaker. So there's no point bashing out 100 of these willy-nilly going, yeah, I can get my foot to the ground. If your back's coming off, and your stomach muscles aren't engaged. So try and keep everything activated, keep everything nice and conscious. 
So for me, I know, and if I'm taking my foot down to the ground, it's a real effort for me to get it to touch before I bring everything back up. And you want this to be challenging, but you also want this to be challenging in the right way. Don't press things, take things nice and steady. So you've got another four and three. Good, breathe out as your foot comes down. Two and one. Good. So whatever you are doing, you're going to gather both knees and you're going to hug them nice and tight in towards your chest. As you do so, you might also feel the bottom of your tailbone lift up off the ground. That's great because you're lengthening through that spine. Hands on the knees and we're going to roll through first one way. Good. And then the other. Okay, time to sit up. We're gonna sit up and we're gonna take it over to the other side to work the other part of our glutes that we did at the beginning. So get yourself nice and steady. You can have your hand propped up with your elbow or you can have your head lying down, what's ever most comfortable. Take the left knee in as high as you can. We're gonna extend through the right leg. Pull the toes in towards the shin and you're going to drop the heel and you're going to pull the toe up towards the ceiling. Hand can be in front of you. I'm just going to take it up and down. So what's going to happen is that it's going to feel quite unbalanced. This isn't a usual position for our leg to be in. We don't normally walk out, walk around with our toes pointing outwards. But it's really important just to focus on the different types of leg muscles and hip muscles to give us full stability. Good, I can see lots of legs going up and down. You guys are doing great. Keep the toe pointed upwards. You might not get much range, that's not a problem. Good. Take it nice and controlled. Take it nice and steady. And we've got six, five, four, three, two, and one. If you need to take a break, do, otherwise keep the foot off the ground. This time we're gonna turn the toe down and the heel is gonna be upwards. And we're gonna take this up and down, depending on how many stairs you've climbed today, whether you've been out and done some exercise, you might find that one position of your leg is a bit more challenging. You can feel it a lot more than the other. Don't forget to keep some tension through the leg as well. Point the toe down and drive through the heel. Good. Try and keep everything nice and still as well through the hips. Keep it going for six, five, four, Three, two, and one. Take a break if you need to and let the foot drop to the ground. Otherwise, we're just gonna take this out in front of us. From here, we're just gonna take the toe in towards the shin. Hands out in front of you, and we're gonna take it up and down. Make sure you're breathing. So breathe out as you take the foot up. Make sure you're not holding your breath. You don't want to have any false core stability going on here by holding your breath. It's a really common thing to do to hold your breath when you're trying to get more stability through your body and more strength. But it's actually fake strength. By holding your breath and bearing down means that you're actually weakening other parts of your body. How are we feeling? Have we got any burning through the leg yet? Okay, let's go for six, five, four, three, two, last one, and down. Oh, I bet you're feeling it, right? Well, good news is we are now going to take it to a different exercise and you're going to come down onto your front. Oh, don't be tempted to have a nap in this position, please. 
Okay, so from here, we're gonna have our hands just sort of shoulder level. We're gonna have our elbows tucked in. We're gonna try and keep our spine really nice and long so that we're gonna be looking down towards the ground. I've only got my head tilted up so I can see you guys, but this is the movement that we're going to do. We're gonna have the head down, the spine is gonna be nice and long, and we're gonna take the hands and the feet off the ground at the same time. We're coming into back extensions. So we've got some back extensions. We're working on trying to stabilize and strengthen through those back muscles. Make sure you're looking down at the ground and you're tucking your chin in. So take these nice and steady, nice and controlled. We've got five, four, three, two, and one. Good, this time we're gonna get the feet together. We're gonna pull the front of the foot to the ground. We want to squeeze those heels as tight as you can. We just squeeze your bum and your leg in as well. We're gonna do the same thing, but we're just going to move the top half of our body. So press the tops of the feet into the ground. Think as well about just engaging your core muscles and we're gonna take it up through the top half of your body. We won't do too many of these. So for these ones, don't try and get too much height. Try and keep those heels together. You should be able to feel those heels pressing together. And we've got four, three, two, and one. Good. Hands down by the shoulders. Then take a deep breath out. As you push yourself up off the ground, you can open up the knees slightly to come into a child's pose. Stretch everything all the way out. Try and get your bum as close to your feet as you can. We're going to have the forehead placed down on the mat and you just want to try and reach forward with your arms as much as you can. So imagine you're trying to just walk those fingers forwards as much as you can at the same time that you're also trying to get your bum down towards your feet. And just soak up this stretch. When you're ready, you're gonna come up onto all fours. Gonna make sure that you've got shoulders stacked over wrists and bums stacked over knees. And we're gonna take this into a little spinal stretch. Palms are gonna be face upwards. And we're gonna slide the back of the hand all the way through. We're gonna drop that left shoulder. And you're gonna take a little look up towards the ceiling. Hold it here for a few seconds. Breathe into it. Feel the stretch through your spine. And then when you're ready, breathe out. Take it all the way up. And we'll do it on the other side. I'm just gonna change size so that you can see, but you can stay where you are. I've got the right hand, it's gonna turn upside down. And we are gonna just slide the back of the right hand all the way through, drop the right shoulder to the ground. And then we're gonna take a little gaze up towards the ceiling. Gentle stretch through the spine. Your next inhale, you're gonna come all the way back up and we're gonna come into standing. Okay, grab some water if you need it. Oh. Right, can you see me? Good. So before we start, we're gonna take it into, I'm gonna take you through, um, I guess, five of what I think are the most essential bodyweight exercises that we can do. So they're simple exercises, but for those of you who perhaps are wondering what to do for exercise during this time, this is a circuit that you can very, very easily do in your own home. It's gonna help you build up strength. Strength work is super, super important. It should be prioritized and you should be doing at least two strength sessions a week. So if you do this, say once a day, you are totally winning. But first of all, oops, a minute, something weird's coming up. Uh, Nomi, you just said, can we record this? This is being recorded, Nomi, don't worry. Um, and what I'll do is I'll send the link out 
um, afterwards. Okay, so we're gonna stand up nice and tall. We're gonna have our feet slightly wide and hip width apart. You're gonna have your toes slightly turned in a little bit. And then we're gonna take the hands out to the side. And I just want you to do little pelvic tilts through the pelvis. If it helps, you can have your hands on your hips, but we're gonna mobilize through the pelvis now. As I mentioned before, making sure that we've got good pelvic mobility, super, super useful, because if we don't have a balanced pelvis, it means that our spine is already slightly curvy. So we're just gonna work through the pelvis and make sure we've got a good range of motion. Good. And now I'm gonna take it up to one side and to the other. So you almost want to try and keep everything else nice and still. And you're just gonna stretch from side to side. Good, and now little circles. So feel the full range of motion with your pelvis. First one side, and we'll take it round in the other direction. Good. You should feel it actually working, that lower spine. Nice. And from here, the hands are gonna come out towards the side. We're gonna take our feet slightly wider now with the toes still turned in slightly. We're gonna lock in your lower body. Your lower body is not gonna move. So in order to do this, what you can do is you can feel that you're pressing your knees in, but pushing out towards the outs, outer edges of your feet to lock that lower part of your body in. And we're gonna take it over to one side, just one side only. Keep the bottom half nice and still. And we're just sliding, imagine your vertebrae, the lower part of your back, just sliding to one side and back again. Again, this is really good now just for working through that lower spine. We're compartmentalizing the spine and how we work it over to the other side. This is also a really lovely, lovely movement for what's known as proprioception. So it's actually getting to grips with how your body is going and a bit more of the mind-body connection. So try and keep those hips as still as you can. Good, gonna take it from one side to the other. I promise you that if you continue doing these classes, look in the mirror, practice this, this will get so much easier. The really weird thing where half of your body is moving and half of it isn't. Nice, and we'll take it into little side stretches. So the hand comes up and a bend and down again. Keep the lower half of your body really nice and still. We have a tendency when we swing down for our hips to swing too. But what we want to do is to try and keep everything nice and still because the more stable and solid we can keep our lower part of the body, the more of a stretch, the more of a targeted stretch we can get through that spine. So take it over to the other side now. Gentle little side bend. This isn't this isn't a competition or this isn't a challenge to see how far down you can get. This is just a mobility exercise to warm up through the spine. Good, and now we're gonna take it from one side to the other. If you get a chance, do this every day. You don't even have to do this for as long as we're doing this. Just a couple of little movements. Okay, last one. Good, take it all the way up, shake everything off. And we're gonna have our feet nice and gentle, gentle through the knees, imagine someone's punched you in the stomach and your knees are gonna go forward, your back's gonna come into a rounded position, your head's gonna drop down. And you're gonna roll up vertebrae by vertebrae. And again, imagine you've been punched in the stomach and come all the way up. This isn't a traditional roll down, we're not rolling down, we're actually just stretching out through this lower part of the body. We've got one more time, all the way forwards, and we're gonna roll up, roll up, roll up. Good. Taking it into marching, but with this marching, try and keep both feet on the ground. So your toes are gonna to stay on the ground, and it's just your heels which are coming up and off the ground. The reason for this. We want to press through those feet and just give them a little bit of a workout as well. Our poor feet are often neglected. 
there again. Keep the both toes on the ground. It's just the heels that are lifting up. And with our hands, we're going to take them out in front of us, nice and fast. Now when we're doing the hands, I want you to be a bit more conscious with them, and you're going to rotate them outwards, and you're going to drive through the heel of the hands. So imagine you're Spider-Man. I've got two young boys, and they just, they like Spider-Man, but Batman's also a cool thing. But um, they've definitely got the Spider-Man hands. They drive through the heel of the hands, rotate those thumbs out towards the sides. Just helps you get a bit of a stretch. So taking it now from the front, we're going to add into the side. And we're going to do front and side. Keep those feet moving. Try and keep the rest of your body in terms of your hips nice and still. This isn't, guys, we're not doing some funky dance class here. Try and keep your hips as still as you can. Good. We're now going to take it up as well. So let's add it coming up. So front and side and up. Front side and up. We should be warming up now through those shoulders. Last one. This is the last one. There you go. Good. Relax. Shake everything out. Take our hands into a cactus position and we're going to take the opposite shoulder in towards the knee. So breathe out as you come in and breathe in as you stand up. So breathing out and in. Breathe out and in. Good. Take it nice and slow and with control. So that if I were gonna, if I were gonna shout stop, like we're doing musical statues, at any point you could hold that position. Good. Don't forget the catch sounds. Breathing out. So you take the opposite shoulder. Got two more. One and two. Nice. Okay. So take you into the next set of movements. Again, I mentioned there were five exercises. First one, we're just gonna go basic. These are all really basic. You guys know how to do these. We'll just go through a bit of a technique reminder. So for our squats, we're gonna take our feet just slightly wider than hip width apart. We can have our toes facing forwards or just slightly out towards the side. You can have your weight in your heel, you're gonna sit back as you're sitting in a chair, keeping nice and straight through the spine and a nice long spine as well. Good, so we're coming down and up. We're gonna take this, we'll do 20 of these. Okay, so I'm really bad at talking and counting, but I'm gonna give it a really, really good go. So I've counted two so far. Let's go, we've got three, four, five, six, Seven, good. Try and get the bum down as low as you can without your heels coming off. Nine, ten, we've got ten more. Ten, nine, eight, seven, you should be feeling it through the legs now. Six, five, four, Three, two, last one. We're gonna come up and because I'm evil, we're gonna take it down into a little squat pulse. Tiny little squat pulse, little movements, make sure you're breathing. For six, five, four, three, two, and one. Oh, stand all the way up, shake out the legs. I went for a run this morning, so my legs are really feeling that. It wasn't even a long run, but never mind. Okay, so you've got alternating squat, uh, alternating lunges now. Move this out of the way, it's a bit imposing. So for our alternating lunges, we're gonna step forwards and take the knees down into 45 degrees, and we're gonna push back off the front foot to stand back up. No idea where that bit of sunlight is coming in, so apologies. Let me see if I stand a bit further backwards. So these are our alternating lunges. If you feel like you've got any pain through the hips, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take one foot out for the other, and you're just gonna stay on one leg, keeping both those feet out. 
Okay, guys, let's go. We've got 20 alternating lunges. One, two, three. You can have a legs of steel soon. Four, five, six, seven. Don't forget about that right angle. Breathe out as you push back up. Eight, nine, and ten. But ten more. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Good. Stand all the way up. Next one, you're going to need to see my feet just slightly for this one. So apologies. You don't get to see my beautiful face. You're going to take it into 20 um, calf raises. So your feet are going to be hip width apart. So you can take the heels off the ground. Make sure when we're doing this that we don't have our legs locked out. So what I mean by legs locked out is when we're pushing through the backs of the knees. This is not what we want. Slight bend in the knees. You're going to keep that slight bend as you take it up and down. So we've got 20. Let's go. Two, nice and with control. Three, we're going to heels up as much as you can off the ground. Four, five, six, seven. Keep that slight bend in the knees. Eight, make sure you're breathing. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, almost there, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. And 20, good. From here guys, you get to sit down. How fun is that? Hurrah! So you're gonna sit down on your bum, knees bent, you're gonna have hands facing behind us, fingers facing forwards. You're gonna drive through the feet, take the bum up off the ground, and we're gonna take it into tricep dips. So with tricep dips, especially when you're doing them from a bridge position, you can also do this on the edge of a chair but you don't get much movement and you want to make sure that the movement is coming in through the arms and that this is not what you're doing. Okay, so you've got 20. Are you ready? If you need to take a break, then do. Let's go. Put one, two, three, four, five, six. Keep the fingers facing forwards. Eight, nine, 10, make sure your head is up nice and tall. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Good. Shake off the arms. So we're now gonna take it into press-ups. So you've got a couple of choices for press-ups. Go with me two sets as we close the door. Sorry, my little one just woke up from his nap. Um, okay, so we're gonna take it into press-ups. So, press-ups, I would advise find either a bit of a wall to do it up against, or you can do it off if you've got a bed or a chair next to you. Um, there's three different ways that you can do this that I think would be most useful. Or you can do them on your knees on the ground. What I found for most people that actually knees on the ground, especially during the first sort of six to seven months, is actually a bit too much. So if I were you, I'd do them up against the wall, or I'll do them elevated. So today we're gonna to do them elevated. This is the one that I'm gonna show you through, and you're gonna do them on your knees as well. So coming in, make sure that you've got a nice long spine, and you're gonna come all the way down, and as you push yourself back up, you're gonna breathe out. So you wanna try and keep that length 
through the spine as you breathe out and push yourself back up. Let's go. We've got 20. One, two. Try and get your chest as close as you can towards the bit that you're elevating off. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Try and keep the core nice and still. Think about squeezing those glutes in as well. We've got twelve. 13. You should definitely feel this in the arm, even if you're doing them elevated or against the wall. 15. 16. 17. 18. 19. And 20. Guys, good work. Okay, well done. Those are the five exercises I really, really think super, super important to do. Um, if you can do them every day, then do it between 10 to 20 reps. And now I'll take it into a little bit of a stretch and a cool down. So we're just gonna work through those shoulders. You can be standing, sitting, it's up to you. We're just gonna roll those shoulders back one at a time. We're gonna roll the shoulders forwards one at a time. Nice, and then take both arms up above the head. We're gonna drop the right hand down just at the bottom of the neck, and we're gonna use our left hand just to gently give a bit of a tricep stretch. So, holding onto the elbow, we're just gonna pull that arm backwards, stretching down through this part of the arm. Nice. We're gonna release. And we're going to take it over to the other side. So using the right hand, we're just going to use that to help pull your left upper part of the arm down to the back, stretching everything out. It's really important that you do these stretches as well, not to press an arch through the back. You want to try and keep everything nice and tall. Good. From here, we're going to take one arm across the body, using the other hand, just going to gently help stretch through this area. Sitting up nice and tall. Good, make sure the shoulder isn't coming up. Good, hold this here for a few breaths. And take it through to the other side. Good. Right, we're going to stand up, take it into just a few more of our little leg stretches. So, balance challenge as well. Make sure you're nice and steady on one leg. And let's pull right knee up in towards the chest. Make sure you're standing up nice and tall. Whilst we're here, we're going to rotate through that foot, first one way. And then the other. Good. So trying to keep this foot off the ground. Then I'm going to take it through the back. You're going to grab hold of it with the right hand. You're going to stand up nice and tall. You're going to make sure that these knees are straight. And you're going to press down through that foot into the palm of your hand. At the same time, just do a little bit of a pelvic tilt. So imagine you're just pulling bottom of your pelvis up towards your ribs as much as you can just to increase the stretch through the quads. Good. And let's take it over to the other side. So pull this knee in, stand up nice and tall. Try and get your balance. It's really nice actually I think doing exercise in bare feet because you're, as soon as you've got a sort of a sole in your shoe that's more than a quarter of an inch thick, I think, um, you basically lose all kind of, your, your foot has lost all sort of sense of the ground. Good, let's take this through to the back. 
and squeeze those knees in nice and tight. You're gonna press that foot in towards the hand. Ah, try not to overbalance. Good, do a little bit of a pelvic tilt, pull the pelvis under, tuck it under. Squeeze, 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 feel the stretch through here. Good. Shake everything out. Imagine just shaking with one leg. Imagine you're trying to get rid of a dog. It's a bit too friendly with your leg. Good, shake out, shake out, shake out with the arms. Really shake them, imagine again, you're just drying off your hands. Get everything out. Good. And the other leg. Shake, 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 shake. Ugh, trying to get rid of a dog. The dog that chased me the other day when I was running. <laughs> it's the tiniest dog I've ever seen. It was really fast and really loud. <laughs> yeah, before we finish, a couple of little neck rolls. Half neck rolls, really going through that half roll. First one way. And then the other. I'm going to press the ball of the foot in towards the ground. Let me show you this. Press the ball of the foot in towards the ground and you're going to circle through the ankle. Really big, nice circles. First one way and then the other. Our poor ankles also get neglected. Let's do the other foot now. Press the ball of the foot in. You're going to circle all the way through. First one, and then the other. And last but not least, a couple of deep breaths in. We can take our feet out nice and wide. Take a deep breath in. Arms are gonna come up, and as you deep breath out, just let everything go. Breathe in hope and confidence and optimism, and breathe out all the negativities and anxieties and worries. Deep breath in, in through your nose, bring up through your lungs and breathe everything out. Last one, deep breath in, all the way up and all the way out. Good work guys, that was amazing. Really, really happy to have you at the session today. Um, super important as well to look after yourself because uh, in order to look after others, you look after yourself. So I think you guys have done a great thing by coming along today.